that is assigned, but, but look at it very closely as, as how it is also going to tie into our message. And so I invite you to please stand for the reading of the gospel. And it goes like this. It was now two days before the Passover and the feast of unleavened bread, and the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to arrest him by stealth and kill him. For they said, not during the feast, lest there be an uproar from the people. And while he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he was reclining at the table, a woman came with an alabaster flask of ointment of pure nard, very costly, and she broke the flask and poured it over his head. There were some who said to himself, indignantly, why was this ointment wasted like that? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. And he scolded her. But Jesus said, leave her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a beautiful thing to me, for you always have the, the poor with you, and whenever you want, you can do good for them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for burial. And truly I say to you, whatever the gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in her memory of her. But Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray them, uh, him to them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money. And he sought an opportunity to betray him. And this is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Lord. You may be seated. So as we are getting into this... Um, Time in our gospel. I invite you, if you need a Bible, to please raise your hand and we will give you one if you'd like to have a Bible. Well, grace, mercy, and peace from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. It, it, this happened not too long ago. Uh, I, I'm wondering if you remember. It's not happened too long ago. It actually happened in 2021. It's called the Super Bowl. And, and I know the Super Bowl is big because. My family, we are a big football family. We love football. And so when the Super Bowl is on, it doesn't matter what team is playing. We're going to watch it, mostly because there's good, funny commercials. But, but we're going to watch it because we knew this year the Super Bowl had the Chiefs of Kansas City taking on the Buccaneers of Tampa Bay. And everyone knew who was going to win. Oh my goodness, we could have told you that when the Super Bowl was decided it was going to be Kansas City. Kansas City was going to win. Everyone said it. All the, all the reporters said it. Everyone that was making any prediction about the game, they said that Kansas City was going to win. And I agreed. Until the game happened. It was on that day, and that night, and then the next day, everyone started talking about the GOAT. Tom Brady as the GOAT. Tom Brady, you know the guy that has won seven Super Bowls with two different teams. The guy who's still playing football at the age of 43. He is the GOAT of the NFL. And then I started wondering, well, how do we determine who is the GOAT? How do we know who is greater than everybody else? Or how do we figure that out? You know, we try to figure it out. We try to figure who's greater in, in your sport that you love or in your house or, or the, the goat uh, in your job. We all know who the goat in your house is, guys. Married guys. Yeah, I, 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 see, I see the look. I'm not, I'm not turned. We all know that. Like, the one, who's the goat in basketball? There's an argument. Is it LeBron James or is it Michael Jordan? Or who's the goat of NASCAR racing? Is it Richard Petty? Or is it Dale Earnhardt? Or, or who's the goat in, in when it comes to music? Is it the Rolling Stones or the Beatles? And who's the goat of the chicken sandwich? Is it Chick-fil-A or, or is it Chick-fil-A? <laughs> we wonder who the goat is. We try to figure out who the goat is. And so how do we determine the goat? Because society tells us that if you want to be the goat, if you want to be the best, you, you've got to do stuff. You, you, you've got to be the better than everyone else. Hard work and determination. And if you don't have that, well then cheat and cut corners. But do anything you can to, to get to the top. Ignore everybody. Ignore everything. And, and, and rise to the top. It doesn't matter how you get there. Just do it. You, you, you know, if you have to cheat to get to the top, you cheat. 
Like, like Richard Petty. Richard Petty cheated. He had a bigger engine in his car than NASCAR allowed. And the Beatles. Well, the Beatles cheated. They, they were using lyrics from other people's songs. And even Tom Brady, the GOAT, deflating people. He was deflating footballs. But yet, they got there. Because what matters is that they were great. So every single day we, we go through this, we compare ourselves to other people. We want to know who is greater. Is it you or is it you or is it me? And when we find out that we're in competition, we sometimes get angry. We get frustrated, we get jealous. Because deep down as human beings, we desire to be the goal, we desire to be the best. Because I want the, the, the things in this world to be about me and me and me and, and I think I deserve more. But, but then we're followers of Jesus, aren't we? And so we're followers of Jesus. Do we or should we even strive to be great? Is being the goat what it's all about? But before we jump into the Gospel of Mark, we have to set the stage. We have to go back to Genesis. In Genesis chapter 3, we, we go back and we have Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve, here they are. They're, they're in the Garden of Eden and they're walking around and they're happy and probably skipping. Yeah, that's why I think she was skipping around and la di da -di, And all of a sudden there's a serpent. And the serpent comes up to them and, and, and asks them, well, like, well, what do you do? What do you eat? And all this. And Adam and Eve say, well, we can, we can eat from any tree in the garden except for that one. Because if we eat it or we touch it, we will die. And the serpent said, No, you won't. You will not surely die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God. See, Adam and Eve wanted to be great. They wanted to become great like God. And since then, since that, that time that happened in the garden, Guess what? It's been going on throughout all history. And that brings us to where we are now in the Gospel of Mark, Mark chapter 9. Because even Jesus' disciples, they struggled with this. Look at Mark chapter 9, if you will. In, in, in Mark chapter 9, we're going to uh, jump to um, verse 33. They came to Capernaum, and when they were in the house, he asked them, What were you discussing on the way? What were you discussing on the way? You can almost see that as they were walking along the road. You have Jesus probably walking up ahead of everybody, and then you have the disciples all kind of hanging back and having that talk. And, 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 and they're probably a little bit frustrated because, oh, I'm sure Peter was there like, Oh, there's, there's John, you know, the disciple whom Jesus loves. Why is he going to walk up there? He just thinks he's so good, you know. John, but he didn't walk on water. I walked on water. And James is probably saying, well, oh, Peter, yeah, you might have walked on water, but remember, you started to sing. I'm the one that usually gets to sit next to Jesus when we have dinner. You can almost imagine that, that Judah is going, ah, I keep the money. I, I have, I have a, 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 a position with all of you of authority. And the big ring goes back and forth and back and forth. And Jesus says he knows it. But when they get to the location, he asks them the question, what are you guys talking about? And what does it say the disciples did? They, next verse, they remain silent. They were called out. They were called out by Jesus. He calls them out. They remain silent. For on the way they had argued about one another. And what did they argue about? Who was the greatest? And he sat down and he called the twelve and he said to them, If anyone would be first, he must be last of all and a servant of all. And, and this is not anything new because they, even at this time, they, they, they thought that you had to be first. You had all the teachers of the law. You had your, 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 your Pharisees, your Sadducees, the others, and all these people that said, you better be best, you better be first, because if you're not first, you're last, and if you're last, you're scum of the earth. 
And you would think the disciples would get it, wouldn't you? But no. Mark chapter 10. Starting at verse 35, and James and John and the sons of Zebedee came up to him and said, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. In other words, they're saying, Teacher, <laughs> we want to be first. We want something and we expect you to do it. And he said to them, What do you want me to do for you? And what did they say? Oh, Teacher, grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. James and John, they thought they so deserved it. They, they, they were better than everyone else. They, they wanted that. And so Jesus replies, and, and this comes in 38 through 45. You do not know what you're asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism in which I am baptized? And he said to them, we are able. And Jesus said, the cup which I drink, you will drink. And with one of the baptism in which I was baptized, you will be baptized. But sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those who, whom it has been prepared. And then when the ten heard it, verse 41, they became what? Verse 41, when the ten heard it, they became indignant. They became angry. Angry at James and John. Like, you can't do this. Just watch chapter, James and John. You got chewed out. And so Jesus calls to them and said, You know that those are considered rulers of Gentiles, Lord, and over them. And the great ones exercise authority over them, but it shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant. And whoever would be first must be a slave for all. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. This whole idea is put in perspective in Mark 10, 35. And it's not just about being, being great today, and it's not just about uh, you know, the, the disciples here. It's, it's about us. It's about who we are. It's about what Jesus is saying. He puts it all in perspective. Today we're celebrating Palm Sunday. We, we have shouts of Hosanna. We have blessed as he who comes in the name of the Lord. It's a joyous day. Jesus was riding into the city of Jerusalem. But as he was riding in, the people were looking at Jesus' greatness. They, they looked at him as, as defined by, a, by the way the throne is assumed. And in other words, that they wanted one who was going to rule. They wanted one who was going to conquer. And they wanted one who was going to battle for them. They wanted this great earthly king. In their mind, Jesus was the goat. He was the goat of Israel. But Jesus didn't define his greatness in that way. And, and, and so as we walk down this road towards Easter, even Jesus, Jesus, with, with those words that he spoke to his disciples, he, he, he actually showed them. He didn't just say them, he showed it because he became the low end, lowest of lowest. He, he came to serve and he came to give up his life as a ransom for many. And he did that. He gave up his life. He gave it up. He became the last of the last. He became the least of the least. Remember, he was whipped. And he was, he was kicked. And he was spit upon. They, they took a, a, a crown of thorns and they pushed it on his head as a mockery to him. They made him carry his own cross. Cast the lots for his clothing. They drove nails through, through him. They laughed at him. And they hurled insults, uh, insults at him. And, and then not only him, but all those that were probably there to follow him and, and breathing him. Because they would turn to them and say, there is your goat. There is your goat. Here is your greatest king of all times. A great, great God. He hung there. He's in the least of all men. See, what, what makes Jesus great it is not how he goes to the top. But for Jesus, it was the opposite. 
is when he breathed his last breath. When he committed his spirit. When he cried out, it is finished. What did Jesus do? He descended. He descended into hell. He became the last. He became the least. He became the lowest of all of us. See, what makes Jesus great is not how he rose to the top. It, that's not what makes Jesus great. It, it, it's that how he stooped, how he stooped to the bottom for you and me. Look at this. It says that in Mark 10, 45. And if you have a way of, if this is your Bible, highlight it, or circle it, underline it, do something. Know it, for even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. That's how much our great, great God loves us. So much our great, great God loves you. And so how does this define Jesus and his, what it means to be great? How does it do that? Well, you, you see, our job is to show and tell the world what it means to be great. Not, not by what society is saying, because society says it's not about people. Society is saying, get to the top. You can be this, and you can be this, and you can do that. The society is echoing those words of the serpent in, in the garden as he told Adam and Eve, you will be like God. That's what society is saying. We have an opportunity today, and, and the next today, and the next today, every day to show how Jesus defines what it means to be great. We have an opportunity to, to, to tell them and to show them what it means to be great, unlike what the world is trying to say. What it means to be great in the eyes of Jesus, to use the opportunities not for, for ourselves, but for those around us. Go and, and, and to serve, not to be served. To go and give our lives as a ransom for many, to share Jesus with, with other people, to help them see who he is. Because of that, as Jesus affirms, that is exactly how you can determine what it means to be a goat, to be the greatest of all time, to do the exact same thing that our Heavenly Father has done, to walk with Him along the road, to experience the lowest with Him, to serve, serve others for Him in His name. Jesus shows us. In his name. Amen. I invite you to stand as we